How are you doing today? My name is Rayan. Welcome to another Metaphor video. Now I know I have been uploading videos for a long time right now and I'm going to be making a separate video for that. So for this video, I'm going to be exploring all the metaphors and psychology behind financial Freddy's security breach. Mainly I'm going to be exploring the psychology behind each animatronic, trying to find metaphors within them and ultimately trying to relate financial Freddy's security breach to real life. Players for the whole financial Freddy's security breach game including all six endings. Enjoy the video. The first animatronic we explore the psychology behind a Roxanne Wolf. Roxy's personality has to do with the psychology behind being ungrateful and not being satisfied with what you have. Roxanne Wolf is the first animatronic most of us realize being has a personality. She is the first animatronic we encounter when it's calling through the vest. We see her compliment herself on such a great performance she did. Now, it's a good thing to compliment yourself to raise your self confidence, but you shouldn't do it to an extent to show off or avoid reality entirely. Roxy is often ungrateful and this leads her to putting other people down and speaking highly of herself. Now we see this in the game when we, when we have to avoid Roxy. Give up. You can't win. I bet you don't even have friends. Sneak away, little coward. Roxy had this mindset where if she doesn't get what she wants, she gets fed up. Now this is most likely because she is so caught up in her own world and concerned about her own problems that she stops thinking about the trophies and achievements she have. Have you ever felt this way? I know most of you did at some point and it's natural to feel like this. We all didn't take stuff for granted. One of the things that you could do is when you wake up is start thinking, start saying things you are grateful for. If you wake up feeling like you're mad or frustrated with life, there's less things in your head that you have and look at those people who don't have as much as you have. Look, I know it may seem like it's not worth it or it's annoying when people tell us to do this, but understand why you're doing this. When you start thinking about what you're doing for, your brain goes into this happy state because you are listing things in your mind that you have that other people don't. You can often get sad when you think about the stuff you don't have. Roxy is like this as she is often crying herself away and looking at what she doesn't have. Problem is, is we always want more. We always want a better car. We always want a better house. We always want a better room. Anything. We always want a better version of something. We never really settle for less. Similar to Roxy, she never settled for what she have. And similar to us, we don't settle. Most, most of us, or even all of us, don't settle for what he have. We look at those who have a better car, a better house, more money, a better job. We always look at those people who is higher than us and who, who have more than us. We need to start looking at people who are lower than us. Once we start looking at people who are lower than us, we will learn that we are special, we are all different. We need to be satisfied with what we have now or else we won't be satisfied with what we have in the future. Because as you see with Roxy, Roxy never gets satisfied with any trophies or achievements she has. She's satisfied. Even though she has a whole golden statue, a whole, a whole place just for her, even though she wins every race, she still, she still doesn't want to lose. And when you lose at something, you always get mad at, yourself, you always get mad at, at everybody else. When you lost something or you just lose at something that you hope you win at, you just get mad. You gotta remember that this is not the end. You don't know what's in store for you in the future. Losing is not the end. You can always try again and achieve the goals that you want to achieve. You gotta be satisfied right now. You can't be satisfied in the future. You gotta wait to be satisfied. You gotta be happy with what you have now. Or you won't be happy with what you have in the future. That was the psychology behind Roxy. The next animatronic we will look into is the psychology behind Freddy Fazbear. Freddy Fazbear's personality has changed throughout the previous finals of Freddy games, as he went from attacking people who stayed overnight to not helping kids escape a piece of plastic before anything bad happens to them. If that's the same Freddy as in the previous finals of Freddy games, I'm pretty sure it is. Throughout the game, we see Freddy help Gregory out multiple times. Freddy Fazbear tries to help Gregory and protect him at any cost. Freddy being different from the rest of the animatronics and help, help him become a better person. The metaphor here is that once you start being different, start being yourself, you become a better person for yourself and others. That's why Freddy decides to help Gregory. It's easy to be like everybody else because you think if you be like everybody else, they will like you. The truth is that we all are unique and different in our own way. It's better to be open at yourself than to be like someone else. 
in the afternoon session to end it, while we are going out to meet Martin Freddy, Freddy says that it has to do with the story of why he is like this. He explains how he ended up finding his own path and started becoming who he was supposed to be. He also explains that his friends, the ones that hurt Gregory, are lost and scared. He already changed himself into a good animatronic, and now he's ready to face Flame after and help his friends get out of the state that they are in. Many people believe that Freddy Fabio is possessed by Michael Afton, which is William Afton's son. This would make sense as Freddy didn't really know why he's, he is helping out Gregory. This also would explain why he could fight off William Afton. He did not end up like his father. He instead tried to help out all the unfortunate souls that had been trapped inside these animatronics. He chose the path he knew was right. Michael can now finally be at peace knowing that he saved all the souls trapped inside those suits. Unless Scott makes another key and souls and his souls end up not being free. Anyways, we all have our own choices to make in this life. The path that we choose could have consequences or could and they could have benefits. Choose the path that you feel is right and make sure you have to have self control whichever, whichever path you choose. I'll talk about that in the next topic. Being unique is a real strength to have because you can start achieving the goals that you want to achieve. Last thing I want to mention is that when Freddy says, I am not me. He is most likely saying that he's not the same electronic he had been for years. This is one of the reasons why I think Freddy is the same Freddy from all those previous finance for his games. He used to be an outlaw that used to hurt people when nighttime approached, but now he's a good outlaw I now I mean he wants to help people now. That is why right funny me when he says I am not me. We have all done things that we regret but we, but we can't change the past. Whatever happened in the past is in the past and you cannot change that. But you have the power to change your future to the one that your future self will thank you for. But Michael Alcott's soul is inside Freddy that and that couldn't mean that Michael has changed. Kind of for his fault, we see him always scaring his little brother, and he and his friends end up stuffing him into Fredbear's mouth and the an an Amatrog mouth snap uh, and that causes his death and a bite of 83. It seems from all those years, Michael finally found peace that he has changed. I have a strange feeling that Gregory is a crying child from Final Phase 4. I mean, we never know the name of William Afton's younger son. It will also make sense why there is no record of Gregory and why he has no way to go when he leaves a pizzeria. This is true, this could be Michael Afton really redeeming himself by protecting his little brother at all costs. That was psychology behind Freddy Fazbear. This next metaphor has to do with mainly Vanessa and Vanny, but also relates to the Dakeel slash Mookie animatronic. Other than that, Freddy, there seems to be another character that is friendly on the surface but really isn't. That is Vanessa. But the sound of the game, she seems to be a friendly character who clearly wants to help out Gregory, but Gregory doesn't trust her for some reason. Once we reach 1 o'clock a.m. and go into the charging station with Freddy, we meet Vanny, a rabbit lady who skips around a pizza box. We next meet her and the game covered Vanessa. Vanny quickly took over Vanessa. Control and start hunting down the kid. After beating all three Mrs. Quest games and getting the ending, it's clear that Vanny and Vanessa are the same people. When Vanny takes over Vanessa whenever she wants to, and Vanessa really can't do anything about it. She feels like she has no control over Vanny. This has to do with the psychology behind self control. Self control is a very good skill to learn as it could help you control your emotions and actually to make sure you don't do anything that, may, that you may regret in the future. Once you have some self control, you have the ability to control your behaviors in order to avoid temptation and resist unwanted behaviors or urges. Self control relates to Vanessa and Vanny because Vanessa can, can control her evil side, aka Vanny. But what if, she, if she could? It may seem impossible, but in a the quest ending, she ends up looking free of Vanny's control and is able to help out Freddy and Gregory. It turns out she can. But she never had a strength or power of Vanny till now. The hidden meaning behind this is that you might think that you have you don't have control over your actions and the words you speak, but you have a strength for it. You just don't know it. Most of us don't know how much potential we have. You can start controlling yourself slowly. Try to cut off bad habits and try to learn to control your actions. It will help you in the future. Remember, it's all a process. This takes time, but in the end, it's going to be worth it. That's my metaphor I have to, that has to do with the self control. Is this fire skill ending? In the ending, Freddy ends up burning the pizza because he wants to put an end to this madness. He sets fire to the place and Gregory wants to move only to find out that Vanny is waiting for him. He captures him, but Freddy ends up pushing him and Vanny down the building. Unfortunately, unfortunately no one will survive. But when Gregory unmasks Vanny, she finds out he found that it's the security guard who was behind the mask. Now that's what happens at the ending, but there's a scene after the credits which shows Vanessa looking down at the burning piece of past regretting everything she had done. Now many people 
believe it took to insist that it was valid, but is it simply that Vanessa's spirit now lies inside a burning piece of flex? Her soul is unfolded trapped in the very building she was supposed to protect. Because because she could uh, control herself from turning to valley, she ended up doing things she regretted. Them. Now this metaphor shows that bad things could happen over time without you even realizing it until it's too late. This is why self-control is one of the most important things to learn because it, it helps control yourself from doing bad things. But without any of us having self-control, we will speak and do things that are bad or regret in the future. Right thing is not important. Honestly, you yourself will be happier, have more self-confidence, and even possibly achieve things that you didn't, you didn't think were possible. That was the card behind self-control and hit me behind the Nissan family. The next metaphor has to do with Mark coming gate and what happened to Bonnie. This has to do with the psychology behind jealousy and also anger. Margaret and Gator is a very angry animatronic. When he crawls through the vents to escape Freddy's room, we can hear Marty smashing stuff in his room. He keeps smashing stuff inside his room, and when we actually go inside, we can see that the whole place is trash. He knocks out Gator and is a very fast animatronic that tries to do it at times. Now, Mark's coming Gator is a new animatronic that none of us know about. Now, many people, including me, believe that Bonnie is not at a piece of text, like a piece of text because Mark coming Gator took down Bonnie in order to take his spot on stage and become popular. Now, this is most likely why, but we don't know as yet. The only hint we got is a message named Missing. In the message, it says 24 a.m. Bonnie is seen leaving his room in Rockstar World heading east towards the atrium. 40 a.m. Bonnie enters the East Circuit. For 12 a.m. Bonnie enters Monte Golfo. This is the only evidence we have of Bonnie going missing. It appears that he went to Monte Golf catwalk and ended up not returning. This could mean that Monte did, did it because he probably was not popular because he was a new amateur and no one liked him. He ended up getting yells and even taking down Bonnie in order to take his spot on stage and become more popular. Jealousy is common though, you really can't avoid it. If someone has a bear card in you, a bear house, a form, more money, and other stuff. But it's important to re remember that whenever you have now somebody else is wishing for it. Jealousy involves fear with worry sometimes of a potential loss. In Marty's case, he's, he's jealous of Bonnie taking his part on stage and not being popular. This jealousy took over Marty, leading him to lure Bonnie into Marty's golf campus to destroy him. This leads to real life because this, these sort of things come to our head a lot. We want, uh, we want what other people have because we think it will make us happy. True, this happiness is a value that something or somebody is found in yourself. Do what makes you happy. Whatever that person has doesn't mean that they are happy. And if they are, be patient. Your time will come. Now, I explained this early in the video with a psychology kind of waxy of how we are being satisfied with what you have. And not being satisfied with what you have can also lead us to jealousy among others. We want what others have. And if we want what others have, we will do anything. And if that means go to extreme measures to get what they want so that we be happy. This is why we should be satisfied with what we have now. Jealousy is common, but we need to learn to control it. Even though somebody has more than you, doesn't mean that they are happy. I and mean, if they're happy, they're happy. Be happy for them. Don't be jealous. If you don't know what they had to do in order to get that achievement, in order to get what they have right now. So just be patient and keep working towards your goals. That was the card behind Mark Gita and Barney. All of you know by now that William Afton has spring chapters in front of a security breach, but only for a portion of the game. Barney tries to revive spring and let him finish his plan, but if at the game's true ending, we'll see that he's unsuccessful once again. I'm not going to talk about how William Afton became the monster he is today, but I'm going to be talking about how he always will find a way to come back and sure he can finish the job. William Afton is a main attack for the full finance of buddies. Final Fantasy 3 location was brought down to destroy Spring Trap and William, but it was unsuccessful and he became known as Scrap Trap. He then appeared in Final Fantasy Pizzeria Simulator, where he and all the other amateurs who were possessed were gathered in one place to put an end to all this madness. Ultimate Custom Night is said to be William Athlon's hell, where he has to survive against all the amateurs he created. He created. Finally, he was apparently controlled by Glitch Trap and ends up getting free into the world and taking over Vanessa and Final Fantasy's help on the VR. And he ends up reviving William Afton and finds a security breach. I think that that is how the story goes with William Afton. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. So, thanks. So, the point of all this is that it shows that William Afton will always find a way to come back. I always come back. 
Throughout all the fights for this game, we Akka always wanted revenge. He and his son died at the hands of his older brother Michael Afton. He and his friends put him in golden fuzzy mouth in Freddy Fazbear's Fazbear, family diner. The Amatrix mouth snapped on his neck. Since then, he has always wanted revenge and this caused him to turn into the monster he is today. Even with such a little life he had inside of him, he still tried to control Freddy with Gregory. This is the psychology of gang revenge. Revenge comes in many different ways. When someone does something bad to you, whether it's big or small, you get mad and want to do the same thing back to them so they know how it feels. It's okay to feel like this at first, we all do. But getting revenge doesn't solve anything. You, you try to do the same thing back to them or something similar won't solve, solve the problem. It probably will make it worse than it was before. You want them to feel the pain you did to them, but it doesn't solve anything. Once you begin to join your revenge, you will only you not only hurt the person you want to hurt, you also hurt yourself. Again, revenge always feels like the right choice at the time, but you'll find out it's not. Your after is always talk about revenge and not accepting what is the right choice. His motivation to do the revenge has led him on an endless cycle of killing. That's like Henry explained in Final Fantasy VI Shwendi. Your lust for blood has driven you in endless circles, chasing the cries of children in some unseen chamber, always seeming so near, yet somehow out of reach. Although for one of you, the darkest pit of hell has opened to swallow you whole. So don't keep the devil waiting, old friend. It's all made it worse for him. We think of his character as someone who is crazy, but we don't know how we see ourselves when we are in we are in a vengeful state. When you let event control do think about if your future self is gonna be part of the decision you made or I was like called we had a weave after on such a travel. The last I'm gonna I'm gonna respond to card behind is Glamour Chica. Now, Glamour Chica is different from the rest of the animatronics. She sets up to Gregory to comfort him and ultimately trust her to order for Gregory to come to her and order for Chica to capture, capture him. Now, this has to do with the psychology behind being a backstabber. Now, Glamour Chica relates to a backstabber because she always says stuff to comfort Gregory so that she, to like Gregory could come to her and ultimately, Glamour Chica will betray Gregory and capture him. I'm not sure this is a metaphor or not, but I feel like the metaphor is somewhat cool inside this video. People who want to backstab someone, it's not, of course, the right thing, of course, you know that. More than that, the reason why it's not the right thing is because you're hurting someone else. I know you don't care about hurting someone else, but you're also going to hurt yourself in the process. You gotta be yourself, you gotta be open. And now, if you just want to achieve something by any means and you don't care about other people's lives, well, you should because part of success is honestly being nice and care about other people's lives. Part of success is not only getting money, but also taking care of yourself. You gotta be mentally in a good place before you are physically in a good place. The problem is, most of us think success is having a lot of money. The problem is that that's not what success is. Money will buy you a lot of things. Right, if you keep hurting other people's lives just for success, you won't be successful in the end. You might have a lot of money in the end, but you won't be happy in the end. Think about what you're doing first and just change your future. Change your future by making the right choices in life. So that was a card behind Glamour Chica. But that's why security has to do with people's personality. Well, actually, has to do with not being satisfied. Chica has to do with being a backstabber, and this advantage has to do with self control. I believe after the one that caused all this mess has to do with the revenge. These all relate to us and our emotions. These emotions are natural, though. You got to learn how to control it, even just a little, as long as you try. That is one of the best things you can do for yourself and other people. I hope you are doing this video. Sorry, I haven't been uploading for a long time. I'm going to be making another video on that. So, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you guys did enjoy this video, please do a like so that more people see this video. And do so, if you have already, subscribe for more playthroughs on psychological hugging and subscribe for more metaphoric videos. So, thanks for guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate your support. Thank you guys so much for 150 subscribers. And I'll see you in the next video. Have a good rest of your day. Bye.